Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and we're here with another great video to bring you some information about what could be happening come the fall into the winter and early spring of next year. Now, first things the first, I'm not trying to uh, put a panic in people or try to fear monger you, all right? That is not my intentions. My intentions is to bring you some of the facts that I have found and that you need to be aware of and why you need to be prepared and have an emergency supply of food, possibly water, emergency supplies as far as first aid and those type of things because we just don't know where this is going to end up. So that's coming up next. All right, so if you've been to the grocery store lately, you've probably already noticed that, you know, the, all the prices in the store have gone up. Everything in the store is going up, all right? So whether it's eggs, it's meat, it's the cost of nearly just about anything in the store, all right? So according to the Bureau of Economic Analysts, and they, yes, I did write down a few notes here so I can get the, the uh, quotes correct and the percentages correct, okay? Over the past year, Beef and veal saw the biggest spike, over 20.2%. Eggs, on the other hand, have gone up 10.4%. And poultry at 8.6%. And pork, you know, the bacon we all love, has gone up 8.5%. Now, as you can see here, everything just keeps going up. While your wages are probably going down or you're out of work. Okay? So why is this happening? Well, you know, back in March when the old, good old, uh, coronavirus pandemic, uh, COVID-19, Charlie Victor 19, whatever you want to call it, had rolled around. You know, it interrupted all the grocery supply chains and we all saw what that looked like. It was a literally a nightmare in these stores. This, these places were just horrible, horrible. You know, you go in there and it looked like the end of the world had arrived. Now, I've been through blizzards, hurricanes, and everything else, and you know, before any of those storms type of things hit, you know, people go to the store, they stock up and everything else, you know? And you know, the shelves are, they get a little bare here and there and everything else, but this was the whole stores, except for clothing. Nobody wanted clothes, you know? I mean, Jesus, the first thing that went was toilet paper. Go figure, you have to have something to eat to need the toilet paper. I've said that I don't know how many times. I still just don't get that one. But, you know, all your cleaning supplies went, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, all your canned goods, uh, chips, bread, um, anything, you know, all your condiments, everything was gone. You know, I mean, stores were empty. You know, and for example, you know, something as simple as, you know, egg companies not have enough cartons to pack their own, you know, their own items and everything else. That's because, you know, we import so much stuff nowadays, if, you know, from this country into this country, I should say, uh, because we just don't make it here anymore, which really needs to stop. You know, we don't really see what has happened here. Should have been an eye opening for everybody, but there's too many big companies and too much money involved into funneling into the government to have that happen. You know, you're talking billions and trillions of dollars here, not chump change. You know, so the person that has the money makes the rules and the rest of us are stuck with what happens in the aftermath. You know, also in April, the coronavirus sickened thousands of workers. We all remember seeing that on TV. You know, you saw all these workers in these processing plants and everything else and they shut them down, you know, and, you know, it just put a, a huge strain on the whole industry of the meatpacking packing plants and everything else from, you know, pork, beef, all of it, you know, so there was all this kind of stuff that was really going on, you know, and <clears throat> what we are seeing happening in the grocery store supply chain, slowly getting back to normal, you know, you go to the store now and everything is uh, pretty well stocked, you know, I mean, you go in there and you can get just about anything you really want. Yes, the meat area is still a little lacking, you know, but they do have it, it just, you know, they're only being five or six packs you may have to choose from, but you could still get something, you're just paying out the nose for it. Um, agricultural business experts basically hypothesize 
that the little pushback from consumers on the rising prices, there's no motivation for these big companies to stop price gouging us to death. So it's just going to keep happening. You know, and you know, some of these companies are looking to probably recover a lot of their losses that they've had over the last, you know, say six, seven months, and uh, we're paying for it. Go figure. You know, you got your Publix and Kroger and Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Target and Walmart and all these, and all these people are all raising their prices and everything else. But, you know, with everything starting to get back to normal and quote, as everybody says, at least in the government and everything, you know, there's no food shortages, don't worry about anything and all this, then why are we still paying all these high prices? Don't know. You know, the unemployment numbers, they continue to rise and millions of Americans, you know, they just lost their 600 extra dollars a week. Um, so, you're, you're the, you know, the unemployment is up. Uh, people are going to be without homes to live in because they can't afford them or they're going to get evicted. Um, basically, you know, what begs the question, you know, as food prices continue to rise month after month, when will it stop? When, when will we see the, the chaos stop? You know, everything is just chaos right now, you know. Uh, the good news is United States has, we have a window. We have a window of opportunity uh, to beat back this COVID-19 before this thing gets much worse. Okay, meaning much worse. The bad news is the window of opportunity is rapidly closing uh, because they also believe that the company... Uh, the country seems to be unwilling and unable to seize the moment that we're in to try and get this thing under control and um, get it somewhat contained during the summertime because come fall, uh, November, December, January, and February are going to be pretty nasty if we don't. Um, you got winters rolling around, which means a cold and flu season which is going to complicate everything because now they're going to think that even if you have the common cold, um, you've got uh, COVID-19 and now you're going to have to have those tests done and it's just going to get real ugly real quick. Um, you know, because they really thought that during this whole pandemic when it started, that when somewhere we get here that all these... Uh, uh, the cases and stuff would drop off and that it would probably go away because they were basing all their theories and all their uh, assumptions and assuming that the COVID-19 would take on the same characteristics as the flu did. Well, that obviously just didn't happen. Now it did it. Um, I live in Florida. Our heat indices have been anywhere between 103 and 107 degrees for the last three months. And um, our cases... Uh, you know, we're just going through the roof there for one point. Um, we're actually down to, instead of reporting 10, 12,000 cases a day, we're down between uh, four and 6,000 a day. So we have gone down, um, but a lot of things were closed and everything else, and now they're reopening. You know, you got all these big businesses that want to be open. Walt Disney World, you've got uh, Universal Studios, you've got all these places that want to reopen. And really, is that just a really good thing to do? No, I just don't think that it is. Um, my personal opinion, I think come November, December, January, February of this coming uh, end of the year, beginning of the next year, are going to be pretty ugly. Um, too many big businesses are looking um, at their wallets and they're not having the same kind of cash flow that they had on the other hand. Um, from the you know years past you know money is uh, what's running the whole shebang right now uh, everybody wants everything open they want all the kids back to school which I totally disagree with um, until they can get this under control now if you live in a state or or someplace where your your numbers are under control you're going down it's manageable and everything else then by all means then start sending the kids back to school if you're not in an area where it's really under control and your numbers have come down a lot and things are still like, you know, racking up, um, I don't think it's a good idea because you're going to have the kids that are going to go to school and now they're going to bring it home and spread it to, you know, they're just going to be the carrier 
and they're going to spread it to either their parents or their grandparents or other people in their family that maybe have underlining conditions and that's not going to be good either so it's kind of like um we just keep beating the same can right down the road you know um i just don't understand where some of these people are really getting a lot of their information and how they really think about what is the best thing for the American people. Now, we should be aiming for, you know, a no transmission before we open the schools and we put kids in the harm's way. You know, I believe that if this was more about kids dying than old people dying, I think it'd be a totally different conversation we'd be having. I don't mean to say that to make it sound sadistic, but it's the truth. Um, I do have like little cliff notes here because I had a lot of stuff I wanted to cover. Um, we've had a lot of these big events that have been taking place. You know, um, they just uh, this weekend, they're starting to play soccer outdoors uh, in the stadium here in Orlando and they're letting allowing fans in. Now, it's not going to be a packed house, but once again, here we go. Uh, Daytona has a big thing coming up. We just had the thing here not too long ago in, in Sturgis, you know, the big motorcycle rally. And I understand a lot of people are motorcycle fans, you know, and they like to go to that or they like to go to rallies, you know, um, bike week and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's just not a good idea. You know, they had a quarter of a million people there in a 10 day thing. Um, it's, it's just not a, a very, a very good thinking process that went into this to allow it to happen under the circumstances and everything that we are under. You know, I wonder if the magical thinking that, you know, have people have been infected and in swaths of this country, you know, the millions and uh, due to the fact that million people who have died were elderly for many Americans, you know, the disease has not really touched their lives. Um, but the moment restrictions and other response measures have you know people start freaking out and they just want to do whatever they want to do and that all leads back to you know you, you we all have to work together in this and try to get this thing under control and get back to our regular lives but it's going to take all of us to do that not one person or one vaccine your vaccine um you know, I mean, maybe if they do come out with something by November, but who knows if how well it's going to be. Does this strand of COVID, does that um, mutate like uh, the flu virus does? Every year they have to come out with a different vaccine because it mutated into something else. And by then, maybe it's going to mutate again. So will that vaccine be basically trash? But the government's kind of going to tell us that. We're in an election year. You got one guy that wants to be re-elected president, another guy that wants to be elected president. So, which way is it going to fall? And who do you believe? That's where we're at. <clears throat> you know, young people, people in particular need to really understand that, you know, they're very likely, you know, on the lesser end to die from any type of uh, a disease getting catching COVID and everything else but the, you know they can get really sick and it can have health concerns later on in life but they're gonna take and spread it to other people in their families community and everything else that are going to possibly die or be hospitalized because of this because of their careless little act of maybe going to college and having a party you know there's more to life than just you know all that you know um, we all have to work together to get the cases down and to be more manageable levels if this country hopes to avoid a dangerous winter. Now, on a further note on this, we all have an opportunity at this point in time, okay? We have a golden opportunity. The grocery stores and all your regular stores and everything, they're all basically all stocked back up. If you don't see the writing on the wall because the government and nobody really has any of these scientists and everybody else they don't have an idea what is going to happen they don't know what the future holds okay they don't have a crystal ball in front of them to rub and look into and tell us exactly what's going to happen so we as 
the people of this country, we need to be prepared for what may come. If that means you have to take some extra money out, you cancel a vacation, um, you take some um, money out of the bank, out of your savings or your emergency fund or whatever, and you go out because right now is the time to do it and stock up on some supplies and everything else because everybody out there saw the same thing I did when all this hit the fan and everything was a disaster, a madhouse. It was nothing but chaos. And there was nothing left when it was over. So you have the opportunity and the time to do it now. So take the time, take the initiative, and start stocking up your supplies for you and your family. Because come November, December, January, and February, might be a little too late. My name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for watching my video. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.